hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we are doing our whipping chat. So get out whatever it is you're working on. Work along with me. I'm not working on anything. So you'll be working by yourself while I chit chat with you. Um, today I decided I'm not going to diamond paint. I haven't been really in the mood to diamond paint to be completely honest with you. I've lost my dojo. Dojo. Diamond paint and mojo. Meaning I don't feel like diamond painting right now. Right now my heart is somewhere else. Um, does that mean I'm never going to diamond paint again? No. It just means right now I'm into something else that I want to do, which is my drawing. Um, I've been really into that lately, so I haven't been diamond painting, which is fine. It happens. Everybody loses their dojo every once in a while. It's a normal occurrence. So if you're someone who's ever gotten to a point where you looked at your stash, looked at your current whip, which by the way, whip stands for work in progress in case somebody doesn't know. Um, if you've ever gotten to a point in life where you've looked at your, your stash and your whip and you went, I just don't feel like doing it. I don't want to do it. That is okay. It happens to the best of us. It happens no matter what craft you're in. I've, I've lost my crojo. I've lost my dojo. I've lost my mojo. So it's just something that happens whenever you do a craft uh, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And when your life revolves around one particular thing, you tend to lose like your oomph for it. And it eventually will come back. It sometimes can take a couple of days, a week, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a couple of years, but eventually it will come back. So for those that are worried, don't worry, Miss Coffee will get her crojo back. It's just the moving stuff is, is killing me right now. Today is the day that I turned the keys into the old place. It's kind of bittersweet because that's kind of where my channel started. Like that's where Miss Coffee for the diamond painting world started. So it's kind of bittersweet in that aspect. And the other aspect, yeah, forget that house. I'm ready to be done. I, I got I got my mail keys ready, the garage clickers, the three house keys. I'm about to hand that crap over. But before I hand it over, I gotta go and clean the walls. So after this video, I have to go clean the walls. But um, the maids came in, they did a fantastic job. Everything is sparkling clean. The house smells amazing. I just have to go over the walls with some grease lightning and my wall cleaner to get some of the uh, the, like to do the baseboards and stuff because I, I told them not to worry about that, that I would get it. I was mostly worried about the major appliances like the stove, the fridge, the microwave, the cabinets. They cleaned all of that, the bathrooms. And uh, so I told them to leave the walls for me. I'm not worried about the walls. It'll take me like maybe 20 minutes. So the house is completely done. I just have to clean the walls up and then hand the keys in and we are officially done with the old place. I'm so excited to be done with it because I'm tired of thinking about it. <laughs> Also, I didn't tell you guys, like a week or a half ago, did my eye just do a weird thing just now? Don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. A week and a half ago, window friend and her brother showed up at my house. And I was like, I don't mind window friend's brother. Again, I don't have a problem with window friend's brother. It's her that I had the problem with. She was the butthole. So I was just like, can I help you? And they were like, we were coming by to say goodbye. And I'm like, what? Where y'all going? Their mother was a traveling nurse. So she was traveling here because of the panoramic. Um, you can't really say the word or apparently YouTube doesn't like it. So because of the panoramic, um, their mom was a traveling nurse and she traveled here to help out the hospital. So because she traveled here to help out the hospital, she was going back to where they came from, which I didn't realize was only 45 minutes where from where I lived at in Pennsylvania. And I was just like, Say word, y'all really live there? Look, listen, mm. but let me, let me ask you this question. We all know a person like this, so don't make me feel like I'm the only person. You ever, you ever talk to someone, whether it be a child or, or uh, an, uh, mostly it's adults. You ever talk to someone and it makes you feel like you wanna ask them or tell them, you're the reason why, you're the reason why people at Pop-Tarts put instructions on the box, like, she was like, well, maybe when I come back, I can play with Maggie again. I'm like, maybe if you come back with a better attitude and stop treating people like garbage, maybe then you can play with Maggie. And she goes, I was very nice to Maggie. Y'all look, listen, I'm not about it. I'm not about it. So I was just like, y'all go out, say bye to these kids and get them off my God dang on porch. So a window friend is officially gone, out of state, gone on the other side of the US. So I don't have to worry about her anymore. Um, so the days just get brighter and brighter. Also, I got my uh, panoramic shot 
And let me just tell you this right now. If you don't agree with getting the panoramic shot, that is perfectly okay, but I don't need your negativity comments in my comments section. I've already had to block three people because uh, if one more person calls me a sheep for getting my panoramic shot, look, listen, virtual hands all day. Don't come at me because if you think I'm one of those YouTubers that's not going to snap back, I will clap back and knock your whole head off your shoulders, okay? Um, so I did get my panoramic shot. I, it was very unexpected. I just kind of went to the pharmacy. I was picking up medications, asked them if they were still doing them. They said yes, and they were just like, we can get you in right now. All right, bet, boom, boom. Now I feel a little bit safer going out, especially where I live because everybody stopped wearing masks. Uh, it just doesn't exist here apparently. So uh, the only side effect I've had is I've been extremely tired. Now look, listen. Is this how it feels to be like a normal adult, like a normal human? Friday after live, I fell asleep in my chair. I didn't even, like, I usually watch my live back, not so much to watch it back, but I look at the, 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 the stream, like you guys talking to make sure I didn't miss anything important or, you know, if somebody asked me a question I didn't get the answer, if I could find them, I'll answer their question for them. And I fell asleep. I fell asleep. I was, I was tired, like legit, not like, you know, my normal tire where I'm tired, but I can still sit up and do whatever for three and a half hours. I was like Mr. Coffee tired. Like I, my head would hit the pillow and I out, I'm tired right now. And that seems to be the only side effect I'm seeing. I'm, I'm extremely tired. Like just for no reason, I've done nothing today. I, I did a couple of things, but I've done nothing to be this tired. But my body is like, nah, you tired. I'm sitting there talking to Mr. It's like I have narcolepsy or something. No offense to you if you have narcolepsy. But it's like I have narcolepsy or something. Every time I turn around, I'm like, I was in the middle of making a sandwich yesterday. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I was talking to Mr. Coffee. I think it was like Sunday. And I'm like, yeah, I think for dinner we're... And Mr. Coffee's like, are you okay? Do you feel funny after you're shot? And he's like, no, I don't. I'm like... Your arm doesn't hurt, like you're don't you're not groggy or anything. He's like, no. Okay. Okay. So I'm just making my... I'm like fighting my eyelids. Like it's the battle between me and my eyelids. And I'm just like, is this what a normal person feels like? Because if it is, I don't like it. I don't I, I could be asleep every night at nine o'clock right now. And for those of you who don't know Miss Coffee that well, Miss Coffee doesn't usually go to bed until about mm, between 2 and 4 a.m. And then I wake up around 9 to 10 or, or 9 to 11, depending on if the kids let me sleep in. So I'm just like, why, why am I so tired? Is this, is this what it's like to be a normal human? I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. I went to bed last night at 1030. It was still light outside here. Okay, for those of y'all who don't know who don't live in North Dakota or have never been to North Dakota, um, we have very late summers, meaning late as in, it doesn't usually get dark. Like we're at the part of summer right now where it gets dark at 1030. Literally the sun was down, but it's still like that little like, oh, twilight before it gets dark. So I go to bed and I had to like block the window with the blinds because it was still light outside. And then, and then I got up at 4 a.m. Got up, went to the bathroom, lay back down, couldn't go back to sleep. So I sat there and played on my phone for a little bit. I watched a video on uh, Skillshare. Um, and then I, I went back to sleep at five o'clock. That's been my night for the last two days. The other thing that's been keeping me awake or that's been waking me up is this stupid ear. Um, I, I found out that apparently I have, uh, I have, I have hmm, brain fart. You see the smoke coming out of my ear just now? I have liquid or some, okay. I have water in between my eardrum and my ear. So like in there, it's, it's in there. And you know how when you go swimming or something, you take your ear and you just kind of shake it and like the water comes out and you're just like, oh, I, I feel relief. I can go on about my life now. Mm-mm. I have, I have three options. I have three options according to the doctor, okay? One, they can put tubes in my ears to make sure it never happens again. I am 36 years old. This is the first time this has ever happened to me. I ain't getting no damn tubes in my ears. Two, they can take a scalpel, cut a little hole in it, and drain it. 
You must have fallen and bumped your mother in the head because you ain't draining nothing out of my ear. No ma'am, no ham, no turkey. Try that sh again. No, no, mm -mm. we're not doing it. Forgive me, it is hot as balls in here, okay? I'm sweating like a whore in church. So, you're like, your last option is to let it do its thing on its own. What do you mean do this thing on its own? She's like, eventually it'll come out. Eventually? So it's not, it's not gonna make me deaf or anything? And she's like, no. Okay, are you sure? Cause I keep hearing, like, Paw Paw keeps saying about it. And then I, I tell the kids that I'm having problems with my ear. And what does my son say? Guess, guess, go ahead, write it down in the comment, write down in the comment section. What do you think Orion said? I, I'll give you a second, I'll wait. This kid looked at me straight in my retina and went, well, mom, why don't you just get some Robitussin? This is how you know you should not let your, your children around old-timey doctors. Robitussin does not cure everything, okay? Even though I have to say, I laughed because Friday, Rachel Ray sent me a message where she found Tussin in Ireland. And I was like, hold up, y'all got Robitussin? Robitussin must be a universal thing. Because <laughs> I know that somebody said something about Barclays, I think. Was it Barclays? Bakley's? Barclays. I think it was Barclays. But she's like, Tussin, good night, everyone. I was like, good night, Rachel. I didn't hear back from Rachel until live. And then Rachel was just like, hey, everybody. Rachel, you, you're alive right now? Like, are you okay? Are you? She's like, I'm real tired. I'm going to go back to sleep now. I'm like, yep, she had the Tussin. So I'm hoping Rachel's feeling better. I got to check on her today. Um, I think Becky's doing a little bit better. If you didn't know, Becky's madness for crafting hurt herself. She burnt herself with hot grease and uh, got a couple of second degree burns. Uh, second degree or third degree? Second degree. She don't need like a skin graft or anything, but uh, her, her, her wounds look pretty gnarly. So like, I, I've been checking on everybody because me with my bum ear, Becky with her bacon grease leg, and then Rachel with her sinuses that she put up for sale. Um, we're all just a hot mess right now. And it's, it's, it's just not, it's not cool. It's not cool at all. Um, so yeah, so I've been essentially drawing because I can't hear out of my, my, my right ear. And I have been just not feeling like diamond painting lately. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure eventually it'll come back. This is the first time it's happened to me with diamond painting. And whenever it happens to me with crochet within a week, I'm just like, oh my God, I want to diamond paint all the things. But I think the move and like trying to rush myself to get back to work and then rush and get everything else done. I think I kind of burnt myself out trying to like, I was turning it into work instead of being, it, instead of it being a fun activity for me. So at this current point in time, I don't care about showing them I don't really feel like working on it and I just I figured you know what I have until the end of August anyways and give me give me one good week and I'll have that entire painting completed anyway so it's it's fine I'll have it done before the DP along uh, ends if you didn't know me and Rachel Ray are doing a DP along it is the fun never ends DP along uh, all you have to do to enter is just work on something with a pride flag color uh, rainbow uh, they have the trans flag, the bisexual flag, all the flags. All you got to do is Google uh, flags, like pride flags, and it'll come up with all the colors. You just work on something with pride colors, and then you use the hashtag on Instagram, hashtag fun never ends DP. And uh, we are randomly going to pick, like, well, I, I am randomly going to pick maybe a couple of people out of there to win some tumblers, which speaking of winning tumblers... We got some contest winners to announce. And don't worry before anybody tries to scam me and like claim their prizes. I've already talked to both women. Thank you very much. So congratulations to these two women. Hey, hey y'all. So today is the 12th. So today we're gonna pick the contest winners of the tumblers for the giveaway from last week. So you know how we do. We're gonna copy the link from here. Link copied. Gonna go down here to the bottom. Go over to the Yahoo random comment picker. We're going to go ahead and paste that link in there. We're going to filter out duplicate users, include replied comments, because some people reply to comments with their answer. And all you had to do was comment what you would name your little girl if you had one. Um, so we're going to try this one more time. This thing has been giving me fits. All right, there we go. 
It's 200, 300, 400, 500, 509 unique comments. I think that was more than last time, wasn't it? Well, good luck to you all. So let's pick our two winners and we're just going to do them back to back. We're not even going to hesitate. So again, good luck to you all. Our first winner is going to be Adriana. If I were to ever have a daughter, I would name her Alina Marie. Alina is a play on Elena, which is a family name. Marie is a family name and the name Marie Elena is a name that is big in our family. I like the idea of giving her a unique name that still has ties to our family. She would partly be named after my late abuela, abuela, which is grandmother in Spanish, but maintaining her own identity. Also, I would love to watch drawing and see your process. Oh, well, thank you, Adriana. So Adriana, you are the first winner of a Tumblr. I will find your comment it's going to take me a bit, but I will find your comment and comment on it. And all you have to do is get in contact with me. You're going to contact me via Facebook, Instagram, or email. And we'll verify your identity and get your Tumblr out to you. So we're going to do this one more time. Uh, I think it has a thing to pick another winner. Pick another winner. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. Good, good luck to you all. Betsy Walker. <laughs> Catherine, after my best friend from childhood. Oh, that's sweet. Betsy Walker, you are our second place winner in the giveaway for this week. Again, all you have to do is get in contact with me via Facebook, Instagram, or my email. Uh, of course, by the time you guys see this, they would have already claimed their prizes. So thank you to everyone who watched and commented. I loved seeing all the names. There were a lot of cute names in there. So if y'all, if any of y'all are having kids and y'all need a, a name idea, y'all go check out the comment section of that video. But thank you all so much for all the input on that video. I do greatly appreciate it. Now back to the original video. Congratulations to Ariana and Betsy Walker. Your prizes have been sent out by the time you guys will see this video. Video, so I do appreciate it and thank you to all of you who entered into the contest. I do appreciate it. I love seeing all the baby names. Um, if I was to ever have another kid, I would just go back to that video and go look at it. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I oh I had a proud mama moment this week, y'all. Look, listen, y'all know I live in North Dakota and my oldest lives in Pennsylvania. She's 15. She just turned 15 last. Tuesday, last Tuesday. So, <laughs> so uh, she calls me because she's house sitting and she's like, mom, I want to cook. I'm like, you want to cook what? And she's like, drumsticks. Okay, you got to be careful because you don't want to catch salmonella. Now, I did teach men up basics of cooking before I left because I wanted her to have a basic understanding of everything because eventually I figured she would move here with us. Now, she didn't, which is fine, but um, she never got the rest of her lessons on how to cook. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. I need to take a drink. Black cherry lemonade. Woo -hoo. Uh yeah, there's no coffee today. That that's how that's how normal I'm feeling right now. We'll get back to it later. So Minna calls and she says she wants to make dinner for her and her friend. And I'm like, who's your friend? Because I knew she was house sitting, but I forgot she was house sitting with a friend. So I was just like, Oh, well, who's your friend? And she was telling me her friend's name. And I was like, Oh, okay, so you guys are just hanging out, chilling. And I was glad to hear that she didn't house sit by herself. So she was like, Yeah, no, uh, me and so and so are our uh, house sitting together and she actually goes to camp Sunday so she will be going to her church camp on Sunday so she her last day will be Sunday house sitting but she wanted to cook something for her and her friend for dinner she's like I'm tired of junk food we keep ordering out don't mind me my head itches um she goes but I want to cook something and I'm like all right well what do you need and she's like well I need your help I can't remember how to cook chicken and I was like oh Girl, I got you. What you what you got? What you got? You know how hard it is to try, to try to instruct a child how to cook chicken when they're at somebody else's house and you don't have control of the seasonings? And I'm sitting there like, okay, look, listen. She pulls out the drumsticks out of the freezer and I'm like, put them in some lukewarm water. Let them sit there for a little bit, okay? She calls me like, I don't know, two, three hours later. She goes, how do I know when they're not uh, frozen anymore? What? <laughs> What? When they're not frozen. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain this to you. When, when they're not cold, when they're not like hard as a rock. She goes, oh, okay, well, they're ready then. I'm like, okay, so you're going to rinse the chicken off. And she goes, do I need to like do anything? I'm like, no, no, th don't, don't pull out the Dawn dish soap and rinse it off. Lord Jesus, don't listen to TikTok. Um, 
I'm like, you just rinse it off, and I'm like, get a couple of napkins and pat it dry. And she's like, okay, am I gonna have to touch this? Oh, yes, ma'am, you about to get elbows deep in that chicken, girl. I'm about to make you, oh, girl, girl, don't mess with me. So she goes, okay, what do I do next? I'm like, okay, so you rinse off your chicken, your drumsticks, you patted them dry. And she's like, yeah, I'm like, tell me what seasonings I got, baby. Tell me what seasonings I got. And she goes, mom, they don't have a lot of seasonings. I'm sorry, what? Look, I'm Southern. My ancestors tell me what seasonings to put on what things, depending on the day. So I'm just like, what do you mean they don't have a lot of seasonings? She's like, they don't have a lot of seasonings, mom. What do they got? Tell me what they got. Now, for those of y'all who don't know, Miss Coffee spent a majority of her adult life broke. Like, thoughts for dinner broke. So I can make anything out of anything, okay? I, I am the queen of give me a piece of chicken, a bag of rice, and a, a thing of peas, and I will make you a whole meal, okay? And I'm just like, okay, do they have salt and pepper? She's like, yes. I'm like, okay, what else they got? She goes, not much from that. I'm like, garlic powder? No. Onion powder? No. Seasoning salt? No. What? What do they eat? <laughs> like, how do you not have these major seasonings in your house? She goes, they have pink Himalayan salt. And I'm like, grab that. I don't know what the hell that is. I've never had pink Himalayan salt. Apparently I hear it's really good. I've never had it personally myself. So I was just like, grab that. So she grabs that and I'm like, do they have any oil? She's like, what kind of oil? And I'm like, these are rich people. Um, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, anything like that. And she's like, I'm not seeing any oil. How do these people cook? I'm like, okay, all right, all right. Hold up, these are rich people, rich people. Think like a rich person. And she's like, what? I'm like, where's their dining room table? And she's like, out in the other room. Okay, go to their dining room table and you're gonna look for something that looks like a syrup dispenser. So she goes out into the dining room. She goes, hey, how'd you know they had that? Rich people stuff. So she goes out and she goes, this thing? And she pulls it up and it's a little thing that holds the vinegar, uh, when people get vinegar and oil on a salad. It was one of those caddies that had the two shakers for the oil and vinegar. And I was like, yes. So smell it. Which one doesn't smell like vinegar? And she's like, this one. And I'm like, there you go. That's your oil. And she's like, how did you know that they had this? All rich people have oil and vinegar. I don't know what it is. It's just a rich people thing. I don't know. And so she's like, okay, what do I do? I'm like, okay, what else is season? And she goes, the only other season they have is something called obe. I'm like, cool, what? She goes, obe. Obe? I'm like, let me see it. She showed it to me. I'm like, Minna. Girl, I love you to death. I really do. That says Old Bay. And she's like, oh. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that says Old Bay, honey. Like, Old Bay? Okay. I'm like, grab it. And she's like, but it's for seafood. Not today. Not today. Do they got any barbecue sauce? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, all right. Listen to your ancestors, okay? Listen to your ancestors. And she goes, what does that mean? I'm like, you'll find out. You'll see if you got that southern part of your 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 blood or your family tree in you. And she's like, what does that mean? You about to find out. I'm like, put some salt and pepper on the chicken. I see her put salt and pepper on it and she twisted it and put some more salt. She goes, okay. And her friend's like, that's not enough salt. And she's like, that's gonna be too much, stop. <laughs> I was just like, she got the ancestors in her. So I was like, put some, put some pepper on it, girl. And she goes, okay. And then I, I put some oil on it. She puts a little oil on it. And I'm like, now take a little bit of that Old Bay, like a, like a couple of pinches and just sprinkle it and then rub it on the chicken. And she, I gotta touch it, I'm like, you gotta touch it. So she sprinkles the Old Bay on after she puts the oil on, she massages it into the chicken. And I'm like, okay, now put it in the oven for about 40 minutes. And she's like, 40 minutes? I'm like, 40 minutes at 375. And she's like, okay. So she puts it in the oven. She calls me back 40 minutes later. She goes, is it done? Not just yet. I'm like, where's that barbecue sauce? And she gets the barbecue sauce out. I'm like, now pour the barbecue sauce on the drumsticks. And she's like, okay. So she puts the barbecue sauce on the drumsticks. And I'm like, now put it back in there for another five to 10 minutes. Puts it in there for another five to 10 minutes. She chit chats with me while she's doing that. And she pulls it out and she's like, oh, mom, they're kind of crispy. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So she's sitting there and she's like, all right, we're gonna go eat dinner. I'm like, did you make anything else with it? And she goes, oh, the rest of the stuff I remembered how to make. And I was like, all right, bet. So she goes and eats dinner with a friend. She goes, yeah, yeah, me and so-and-so think this is great. That's, mom, that's awesome. And her friend was like, well, why didn't you call your dad? Your dad probably could have helped you cook. And she goes, girl, my, my mama is Southern. She knows how to cook better than my dad does. I'm like, yeah, if you want, if you want her dad to cook for you, I don't know what his cooking skills are over the last, I don't know what, 12 years. But um, when I was with Minna's dad, 
uh, all he could make was noodles and cheese. Like he would boil noodles and then put cheese on it. It was his favorite snack. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with him. But uh, yeah, so she, she, I had a proud mama moment because she, she listened to her ancestors and she made herself and her friends some dinner. And I was just like, I'm here for it. And she's like, I even made a salad, mom. I'm like, look, she remembered how to make a salad. I'm like, hold up, did you put onions in a salad? And she's like, no, good girl, good girl. I don't like onions in my salads. I didn't teach her to put onions in it. But one day her dad made her a salad with onions in it. And I was just like, it is the middle of the day. You do not have onions in the middle of the day. No, it's just your breath will be hot all day. Like, no. So she's doing fun. She's doing fine. She's having fun over at the house. And the house has a pool. So she gets carte blanche of the house and to go play in the pool. As long as she takes care of people's pets and stuff. So I thought that was really cool. Um, her dad is doing better, I guess. And it's funny because I told you guys in live about Maggie going around and telling everybody that mommy has an ex-boyfriend. What I didn't tell Maggie is mommy has three ex-boyfriends. <laughs> but Maggie, uh, I, I called uh, Minna's dad to check on him because he isn't doing the best right now. And I was just like, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Uh, it's, it's not the panoramic that's got him. It's just he had a poison ivy. So he's just like, you know, it hurts, but you know, it is what it is, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, bet. Sorry, there's like prairie dogs that keep running across the road. And they keep, I keep, I'm like, oh, look, talk to the people. Say, hey, look, a prairie dog. Um, we're, pr between prairie dogs and quails, this is wild kingdom back here, okay? So anyways, so I call her dad and her dad and I are talking and Maggie comes up and she goes, hmm, you must be the ex-boyfriend. And Minna's dad's just like, hold up, what? I'm like, oh, you about to get an earful now. He goes, hold up. Max, what did I do? He calls her Max. He goes, Max, what did I do? You mama's ex-boyfriend. You can't do that to my daddy. What? I'm like, honey, what are you, what is he doing to daddy? Well, he's your ex-boyfriend, right? I'm like, and? I'm like, okay, Maggie, let, let me explain this to you. Ex means we don't date anymore. And she goes, well, mommy, I thought you said we couldn't have kids until we got married. I did. She goes, were you married to Dave? No. Ooh, mama, I'm telling Paul Paul, you weren't married to dad or to Dave. And I'm like, Paul Paul knows this. No, he doesn't. I'm telling Maggie's big thing right now. She's telling everybody on everything. Um, Maggie had a little bit of a spill the other day where she fell off her bike and she scraped up. The t I don't know how she did it, but she finally told us how she fell off the bike because I had no clue. We were inside. She was outside with Orion playing. And the next thing I know, I go upstairs to take a shower. I come back down. She's beat the hell up. And I'm like, what the hell happened to you? Mr. Coffee bandages are up and everything. It was right before live last week. And so I'm just like, what the hell happened to you now? Like, what did you do? What did you get into? And come to find out, she was riding her bike and decided, because Orion can do tricks on his bike. He can do a wheelie. He can ride with, like, he can, like... What do they call it when the women get on the horses, but their legs are only on one side because they being fancy? I don't remember. Side, side, side saddle? Is it called side saddle? I don't know. Write that down in the comment section. Question of the video? Um, but she, Orion can ride like, you know, with all both feet on one side of the bike and he can, you know, stand up without sitting down or he can put his feet on the seat and ride around. He's learned BMX bike tricks. Like his dad went and got him new tires for his bike and you can't tell him nothing. So Maggie decides, I'm new at learning how to ride my bike. Y'all can't tell me nothing because when a new, when a kid learns something new, look, listen, they know everything about it instantly. You can't tell them nothing new and nothing you say or do is going to like divert that. So she's just sitting there and she's just like, yeah, I know how to ride my bike. So I'm going to do a trick too. Her trick was to take her hands off the steering wheel or off the, steer the steering wheel, the handlebars. And then she ate concrete. Um, like I said, her shoulder is scraped up, her elbow is scraped up, her hip is scraped up, her knee is scraped up, because it was the first day that she decided to wear the shorts that she just insisted that she have because shorts are life right now because it's, it's warm out, which I get it, I, I understand. Um, she was blessed to not have the curse of the thunder thighs from the Harris side of the family, which is my side. So like, you know, she got her little string bean legs and I'm just like, mm, bet you wish you had them tights on now, don't you? So she's healing from that. But like, anytime you touch her, she's like, ah, like she reminds me of Stuart from, uh, what's, 
what was the name of that show? Oh my god. Y'all remember Stuart from, it's not In Living Color. Was it In Living Color? No, it wasn't In Living Color. It was another com comedy show. Uh, the kid named Stuart. And he's like, look what I can do. Uh, she reminds me of him because whenever you go to touch her, she goes, no. And I'm like, you should be shamed of yourself. You should be shamed of yourself. Stop. Just stop. But she's doing a lot better now. Uh, everybody's just kind of beat up. Yesterday was awful because uh, I was at the dog park and that's how I met the lady across the street there with the two Malumutes. And she uh, she came over and she was talking to me about the lady with the German Shepherds that gave me issue like what, a week or two ago? And so she was talking to me about that and I was like, all right, well, Maggie kept coming up to me, talking to me while I'm talking to the lady and she asked me for my key card to get back in the house because she wanted to get a popsicle. And I was like, all right, go get a popsicle. What she didn't do was bring the key card back the last time she went in the house. She left it on the couch. And I'm like, well, that's fine. Orion's in the house. He can let us in whenever I get ready to go. So I got to come back to the house. And um, yeah, Orion was in his room, which Orion's room is essentially the back of the house. Like right, technically, I think he's right above me here in the craft room. So I'm just like, well, he, he should be able to hear me like no problem. So I, I'm at the front door with the dogs, okay? And I knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. Nothing, okay? Knock, knock, knock. Nothing, okay? Knock, knock, knock. Nothing. At this point, it's 93 degrees outside, okay? We had already been outside for an hour. Okay, we were talking to the young lady that I was talking to outside for an hour. So the dogs were hot. Killian does not do well in heat. He's a Siberian Husky, full blood Siberian Husky. He doesn't do well in heat. He doesn't like it. Daisy is a full blood German Shepherd. She don't give two flying flip flops. She just wanted to lay down somewhere and get some water. So I'm just like, okay, knock on the door again. No, Orion. I must have knocked on that door for 15 mother chicken minutes. And I'm just like, where is this kid? Tell me he's taking a nap in the middle of the mother day. So I'm knocking, I'm knocking, I'm hitting hard. I'm talking about I'm hitting so hard, which is not swollen anymore. But my hand, well, you can see it right there. My hand is swollen from beating on the door. I was hitting it so hard. Like I was FBI, FBI DEA beating on this door like, let me in, let me in. Nope. So I was like, oh God, God dang it. And I finally realized, because again, I'm also one of those people that they made the, the instructions on the Pop-Tart box for, um, I keep a hidden key in the garage. Now, it's not hidden in the garage anymore, obviously, because I just told the whole world. Um, but I keep a key hidden in the garage. So I'm just like, duh, go get the key. So I go in the garage, get the key, come back, open the door, go upstairs, and I'm like, I go busting a rhymes room, I'm like, boom, boom, boom. What are you doing? Yo, look, listen. Why didn't he answer the door? He's not reading, for those of y'all that are like, oh, he's reading. Nope. Mm -mm. He's playing video games. Now, Orion has been told numerous times, if you're gonna play video games, that's fine. We don't mind if you play video games. He has like two hours a day that he can play video games. Um, and the rest of that time, he's either out of his room, downstairs here with us playing, or she's played us to death with Go Fish and Spit. I don't know what Spit is. It's a game he plays with his dad. Um, which, does anybody else know what Spit is? I don't know what the hell that is. I know what Pity Pat is. Okay, so you're either Team Pity Pat or you're Team Spit. Mr. Coffee's Team Spit. I'm Team Pity Pat. Pity Pat is a game I learned down south. I don't know where Mr. Hell, Mr. Coffee learned Spit from. I'm going to guess uh, he learned it from uh, New York. I don't know nothing about that. But uh, I'm sitting there and he, he's, I go, I go in his room, he has his headset on. He's been told numerous times, don't put on both headphones. And while I was outside, I do this thing to the kids, okay? When I need the, to get their attention, if they're upstairs and I can't get a hold of them, I will turn on their echoes. So what I do is I go into the app on my phone, I go to their echo, and I play something really stupid that's going to annoy the piss out of them and I turned their speaker up all the way. So I kept doing this and I kept watching him turn the speaker down and turn it off. He did that six times. Didn't bother to come downstairs and ask me, you know, mom, what are you doing to my echo? Just kept turning it off and I'm like, and I kept playing baby shark. And he still didn't come down and be like, mom, what are you doing? Like I expected him to come downstairs and be like, why do you keep turning this on? Nope, he didn't care. 
He didn't care. He just turned it off, kept going about his day. I'm like, so when I finally did get upstairs, I fussed at him. I was like, why didn't you come downstairs? There couldn't have been an emergency. And she go, he goes, was there an emergency? Yes, I was stuck outside. He goes, well, where's your key? That is beyond the point, okay? Say I had forgotten my key, which I didn't. I'm like, well, say I had. You just gonna leave me outside like that? He's like, no, I'm sorry, mommy. And then Maggie comes outside looking like a ragamuffin and I'm like, girl, what happened to you? Like, how, did you eat lunch or did you wear it? Like, I don't get it. Is, is this the latest New York fashion? Why is half of your burrito on your shirt? I was saving it for later. And then like when she said that, like my brain immediately went back to all the times I've seen her sucking on her shirt and I couldn't figure out why. And I'm sitting there going, stop sucking on your freaking shirt, kid. What's wrong with you? She legit is saving the food for later. I, I don't know what's wrong with kids. Um, and then I sat down to dinner last night with Mr. Coffee and the kids and we were just sitting there having dinner. And I noticed that Orion's been doing this weird thing with his food lately. Tell me if this is weird because this is, I, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with them. Um, on top of teaching Orion how to properly use furniture because he still sleeps half in the bed, half out the bed, like he don't got a bed. Um, he will, he, what was that? All right, hold on a second. Okay. So tell me if this is weird, okay? Orion will take his food, right? And it's like, say we having pork chops, okay? I made fried pork chops last night. He, he took the skin off of it. I'm like, thanks. It took me many years to learn how to make the breading on, on pork chops like that, but I appreciate you just taking it off like it's nothing. Um, so he takes the skin off of it and I already have it cut into little pieces for him and Maggie. Not like tiny pieces because they're not babies, but like little chunks because they don't like bones and stuff. Um, so I had it chopped up into little cubes for him. And he took his finger, grabbed the piece of meat, picked it up, and then stuck his fork in it and then ate it. I'm like, doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of the fork? He goes, I guess. So then he's, I'm like, no, 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 use the fork. Use the fork. And then, of course, Mr. Coffee, being the person he is, yes, Orion, use the fork. I'm like, is that supposed to be a Star Wars reference? And he's like, please, thank God. At, at least you got the reference right. I'm like, yeah, I get Star Wars, Star Trek mixed up. Look, listen, don't come at me. Don't tell Uncle Jesse, but I've never seen Star Wars. My mom loves it, that and Star Trek. And every time she would watch it, I would walk away. It just did not seem interesting at all to me. But then again, I am also one of those weird people that does not watch TV. So I'm sitting there and I'm watching this kid eat his food by picking it up, stabbing it, and then eating it. Pick his food up, stab it, then eat it. And then he would go get his peas and he'd like, he'd, he'd essentially trap his peas in his fingers like this, okay? Just trap his peas. And then he would take his fork Ryan, what the hell are you doing? Who taught you this? Like, where did you learn this? I don't know. Um, okay. Like, that's just a normal way to eat. Meanwhile, Maggie, she's, she's like half finished with her food because a lot of the times the kids graze. Um, they graze on their food like little cows or something. And I'm just like, why can't y'all just ever eat? Like, why is it every, every night at dinner, it is a whole battle with children. Now, as an adult, we ain't battling nothing, okay? So like, that's something obviously you grow out of. Sorry, I'm trying to put my watch back on. But that's something you grow out of as a ch as an adult, I know. And I, I'm pretty sure it's just a kid thing. If it's not just a kid thing, then it's just a my kid thing. But uh, for some reason, they can't just, they can't just eat dinner, okay? It has to be, let's play for 45 minutes, irritate the crap out of mom and dad, put half of our food on the table, the other half on the plate, and then eat the food that's on the plate and say we're done when all we did was push most of it off the plate. Maggie's idea of eating meat right now is to chew it up as much as she can and then spit it into a napkin. I'm like, why, why, why aren't you eating the meat? She's like, I don't know, it tastes funny. What does that mean? What, what, is, what does it mean it tastes funny? And at first I thought something was wrong with her because I'm like, 
it tastes funny. Maybe she has like a throat condition or something. I don't know. I we've, we've had her checked out and the doctor's like, no, she's just a picky eater. Okay. That was a couple of years ago. Maggie is very picky. She went from not eating meat to now she will eat meat, but she won't eat bread. So like if we buy her a hamburger, she will eat the meat, not the bun. But she loves toast. Please explain. These kids didn't come with a manual. They came with a receipt, not a manual. So I'm just like, what, what, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? Life is hard out here in these crafty streets. But yeah, so everybody's doing great. Um, the Prairie dog. I'm pretty sure that, okay, that last pause that I just did, it was the prairie dog. I'm pretty sure he threw something at my window because I looked down and he was just sitting there chilling, okay? Like, don't look at me like I'm crazy. Like, these animals out here are out of pocket. They be throwing stuff at the window and everything. Like, I'm trying to, like, it doesn't understand that I'm trying to record a video. Um, but anyways, everybody here is doing great. Uh, let's talk about Daisy because I've made mention that Daisy's been super itchy. She has been since she got groomed last. And I couldn't figure out why. Well, then I realized what it was. Um, when we took her to the groomers last, when she came back, she was still wet. And I didn't understand why she was still wet because D Killian was dry, but she was wet. And I didn't understand what was happening. But I was just like, maybe they just left her wet because it is warm outside and they figured she'd just dry outside. No, these mofos did not fully rinse my dog off. Daisy now has three hot spots on her skin and three bald spots because they did not fully rinse her off. It's been a little bit since I've taken them to the groomers and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. So I was giving her Benadryl at first and I was realizing it's not doing anything. Uh, I sprayed her down with apple cider vinegar. That got her to stop as chewing and scratching as much. But then as soon as it, you know, wore, wore off, she was right back at it again. And I'm like, I was trying everything I possibly think of. Um, I called the vet and the vet said, well, when did this start? I told them it started when I took her to the groomers. When I brought her home, she would not stop scratching. The groom or the doc, the vet said more than likely what ended up happening is they did not fully rinse her off. So she still has soap on her. Um, he was like, call the, call the groomers and ask them to bathe her again. I don't want them to bathe her again. They didn't do it right the first time. And Daisy, when Daisy is a dog that likes water. So if you put her in water, she will sit there, legit sit there. Um, so I was like, I don't want them to bathe her again. And I called the, the, the vet last night and I talked to the lady with the two Malumutes and she was like, she has some oatmeal spray, which is why I have to keep an ear out because she's supposed to be coming over with it. She has some uh, spray that has oatmeal in it. So it soothes the skin and helps promote healing of your skin. Um, and I've been using apple cider vinegar and water. Like, uh, I think it's like, one part apple cider vinegar and then three parts water. Um, that's what I've been using and it seems to be working. And then this morning I went, okay, because I didn't want to, I didn't want to rinse her off last night uh, when I called the vet. Cause I, I didn't call the vet until I saw the hot spot. And then I felt the other two sp spots where she had been scratching and chewing and they also had hot spots. So I was like, okay, let me call the vet. I call the vet show, and I send them pictures through text messages. And she was like, yeah, it seems like she didn't rinse off all the, the soap. So we're going to need you to rinse her off and then spray her down again with apple cider vinegar. See if that will help. If that does not get her to stop scratching and itching. Uh, she goes, they do make hydrocodone for pets. She goes, you can go on Chewy and get it. She goes, I can write you a prescription. But I'm telling you right now, Chewy is going to be a little bit cheaper than getting it from me. And I'm like, all right, bet. Why I like this vet because they do try to help me save money because I've already spent a lot with Cuz Achillean. And she goes, actually, you can also put this on Killian's face to help promote the healing of his face too, since it looks like he's broken out again, again, or uh, he's broken out again. So go ahead and put this on his face as well. And I was like, all right. So uh, I have hydrocodone spray for dogs coming, hot spot solution coming, and something else uh, with oatmeal in it to soothe her skin and Killian's skin. Um, Cause it, it never dawned on me to put anything like that on Killian until now. And I'm just like, okay. I'm, I need to get my dogs better. This is ridiculous. Like my dogs are walking around here looking like they have mange and there's nothing I can do about it. Um, so then this morning I got up, I took the dogs out. I came back and I was like, all right, Daisy, let's go. And I run with her up the stairs. She tripped me up. So I fell down two stairs, but then I got back up and I kept running with her and we run up to my bedroom and I closed the door 
and she looks at me, she looks at the door, and she looks at me, and she's like, oh, like, she has that oh snap moment on her face, and I'm like, you want to get in the tub? And she's like, Daisy doesn't like getting in tubs. Like, she'll get in a lake, or, like, at the vet's, uh, or the groomer's office, they have, like, a step stool that walks into the tub, and then they close it. She doesn't mind getting into that, but, like, tubs at home? No. No, she don't want to do that. So she, like, puts her head down, and she stalks over to the tub, and she climbs in, and she just sits down. She was all mopey until that warm water hit her. And I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed that I didn't think to do this beforehand because I had felt really bad when I went to go spray my dog down and there was still soap suds coming off of her. So I called the groomers and requested a refund for my last grooming and uh, told them that I won't be bringing my dogs back um, because if you can't fully wash a dog properly, then I'm not bringing my dog back to you. And luckily enough, when I told the lady that this morning, uh, she told me about another grooming service out here that does way better than the groomer that I was currently going to. So yeah, so Daisy is doing a lot better. She's, she hasn't, I haven't seen her scratching or licking or itching since she got her shower this morning, which is a, was like, I don't know, 10 o'clock. Um, so she's doing a lot better. Killian seems to be doing normal. He's normal Killian. Um, but yesterday also I got furniture in. Now, we have a spare bedroom here. And I call it the second craft room because it's where I keep the backlog of all my stuff. Because if you thought my craft room was all that I had craft-wise, you're sadly mistaken. I needed somewhere to, put, to store my diamond paintings and stuff. And because this was a staff house... This house wasn't exactly built for storing stuff. So it doesn't have a lot of storage space. So there's not a lot of closet spaces here. They do have closets, but uh, there's not like, uh, there's not like a pantry. There's no pantry here. There is a laundry room, but there's no like storage area for you to store stuff unless you put it out in the garage. But then again, if you have a car like Mr. Coffee's, uh, trying to put that in the garage with all your stuff, because everything, because Mr. Coffee's truck has one of those front grills on it, it has to be, like the garage where his car is parked has to be completely clear for him to get this close to the back wall so that he can fit in there. Um, so I'm just like, okay, we don't have much storage space, so I had to put everything up in that second, or that other room upstairs. And plus we figured if Mena ever came to visit, or Mr. Coffee's mom, or my parents, it gives us an extra room for them to sleep in instead of having people camped out in my living room. I hate that. So I decided I was going to order furniture for that room and I wanted something simple. I didn't want like, I didn't want to go over to Ashley's furniture where I got like my nook and the the kitchen table. I didn't want anything that extravagant because I'm like, if, if a guest is coming to my house, I'm expecting you to leave within a week. Okay. You, you're not staying here for a long extended period of time unless you're, unless you're Minna. You're not staying here for a long extended period of time. So I don't need whatever it is to be so comfy soft that you want to live the rest of your life out here. No, like I just need it to be comfortable enough for you to lay on it for a week and then go home. So I'm just like, okay. Well, it told me that, because I had a couple of people ask me about uh, where I got it. I got it from Amazon. It's a sectional sofa that turns into a bed. It says a queen size, but I don't know what size the queen size is, but that's a little small for a queen. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a big mamma jamma. Um, so what it is, is it, it's an L-shaped sectional. So it's like this, it's an L shape. And then the, the lounge on it, the part that makes it the L comes up into a storage space, which is where I'm going to put extra pillows and blankets for whoever comes to stay the night or whatever. Um, and then the couch part of it, if you pull out the bottom part of the couch and then they have, it has two handles and you stick, you pull those handles up and then click it into place, it turns into a full, a, 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 a bed. I, I don't know why I'm stuttering today. I can't talk cheese. So I got, I got, I ordered that. It was like $7.69 or something like that. It wasn't that bad off Amazon. And I'm thinking it's coming off Amazon. So it's not the best quality. And I know this again, I don't expect people to come here and stay for the rest of their lives. You're just coming to visit. So I was like, all right, I'm going to buy this couch. It has a lot of good reviews. It has pictures and everything. I look, I like how it looks, whatever. So I wasn't going to expect, because I ordered that last week. And it said it wasn't going to be here until the 20th. And I'm just like, okay. So I wake up yesterday. 
my ear is clogged, so I'm already in a bad mood because I can't hear. And I keep, like, I, I feel like Little John from, uh, what show is that? The Chappelle Show. If you remember, if you know anything about Dave Chappelle, he had a show named called The Chappelle Show, and he did a character called Little John, which is after the rapper, and he would go, what? What? That's what I feel like, because that's how I've been acting all week. It's just, what? What? It's just been a mess. Anyways, so I come downstairs yesterday. The kids are trying to talk to me, and they're both talking at the same time, and my brain can't process that in one ear. I literally, all I'm hearing in the other ear is, and I'm like, oh my yeah. So I, 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 I get them settled. I get their meds. I open the front door, and there's these two huge boxes just sitting on my porch, and I'm like, what the f is this? I'm walking out to go walk the dogs and I can't get off my porch because there's two huge boxes blocking my way. And then like a little box put on top and I was just like, this is my, my camera mount. I know what that is. What is this? And I look at it, it's like a hundred pounds. hundred pounds? What the hell is it? <gasps> the couches. So I like, you know, muscle man the couches into the house. Now take it. I have on nails, okay? And they're like long nails. I've already stabbed the crap out of Mr. Co I literally went to go give Mr. Coffee a hug and I stabbed him with the nail, like one nail, and it literally took skin. Look, listen, these are my new claws. <laughs> I haven't hurt myself with them, but apparently Mr. Coffee, I just keep messing him up, okay? He was asleep the other night and I was like, aw, he's so cute when he sleeps. I couldn't sleep, so I just was staring at him awkwardly while he was sleeping. And he was like smiling and I was like, oh, can I have some of that good sleep? Can you share some of that good sleep with me? Because I can't sleep. Um, and I went to go do something to his head and I ended up stabbing him in the forehead while he was sleeping. He woke up, he's like, oh my God, it's on me. And I'm like, what's on you? He's like, a freaking spider. I'm like, a spider, where? Turn the light on. It wasn't a spider. It was the fact that I, I jabbed him in the head with my fingers. I didn't tell him that. You know, I don't, shh, we're not gonna tell him. We're just gonna make him think that there was a big, like he was dreaming about a spider apparently and woke up and thought the spider had jumped onto his face. I just let him keep thinking that. Anyways, uh, hashtag marriage. <laughs> but uh, so I, I, I lug the couches into the house and there's two boxes and it tells you it comes in two different shipments. But a lot of people, the biggest complaint was that the two shipments wouldn't come at the same time. They would come separately. So one would come one week, one would come a week later. So I wasn't expecting them to both come at the same time. And they did. And I was like, oh, well, that's great. Like, I can, you know, have Jordan put it together when he gets home. I don't need no man for nothing. I get in back in with the dogs and I look at the, the things and I'm like, I can do this by myself. I don't need him. <laughs> so I take the boxes and I couldn't slide them up the stairs because the way they were going, like the way they were sliding... It was literally hitting the top of the stair, but it wouldn't move. So I had to like flip them over end over end all the way up the stairs and then push them down the hallway, turn them and then push them into the guest room. I had to do that with both boxes. The stairs and I are becoming more friends. Like I can go up and down the stairs. Every once in a while, I still get out of breath. Um, so I'm just like, well, crap. So I, I got both boxes of the stairs and I'm just like, uh, uh, okay, okay. And then I'm like, it says no tool, like literally on the box in big letters, it says no tools required. You know you lying. I'm going to need a hammer or something. Like you can't tell me there's no tools required. Look, listen, I open up the boxes. I got the stuff out. I pushed the boxes back down the stairs. Um, the dogs were ended up like, I go, I go to try to go back down the stairs and the dogs are laying in the boxes. And I'm just like, okay. So uh, I go to put the couches together. And it takes me a good 15, 20 minutes to get them together. I was so proud of myself, y'all. Look, listen, I put those couches together. Didn't even break a nail, okay? Did not even break a nail. So this is day what? I put those nails on Sunday. Today is Tuesday, so day three. So that's three showers and a couch put together and bathing a dog and, like, cooking dinner and everything. And the nails are still on. So, uh, yeah, nail, the nails and the nail glue are good. So she did a good job. Um, so yeah, uh, also I was told I was saying her name incorrectly. My bad. Um, she told me how to say it properly. I don't remember how to say it. So I'm, I, I, I'm still in my head like Mysteria. <laughs> uh, I think it's Mysteria. I think she says Mysteria. Anyways, um, thank you, 
mystery of for the awesome nails. I love them. Uh, so yeah, just rambling on about nothing. Uh, so yeah, I got the new couch up in the craft room. Uh, Daisy is feeling a lot better from being bathed. The kids are currently upstairs playing games with their friend because we're about to go over to this other house and go finish up the last little bit. And I had, I left cleaning stuff over there. So I need to go get that as well. Drop those keys off, edit this video and everything else. So, um, yeah, I'm going to cut it short here for the week. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, please leave those down in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them to the best of my ability as soon as I can, whenever I'm done doing whatever else I'm doing. You know, I got a life and stuff. So again, oh, which by the way, we made a new friend. He keeps popping up on the porch back here. We're calling him Patrick. So it's pa Patrick the Prairie Dog. And we don't have a, a name for the twins yet. Uh, the twins, there's two baby quails that have been coming up on the porch as well. And we have the baby bunny and stuff too. But we'll figure out names for everybody as soon as we get, you know, a little bit less frazzled. But with that said, folks, I got to get out of here. Please remember to stay safe. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face out in public. Keep your six feet. Wear your mask. And always try. Be kind. Be courteous. Be cool. Bye, guys.